Hi, I'm Mr. McKenzie, and welcome to our Honors Biology class for the David W. Carter Collegiate Academy. We're excited that you partnered with us this school year. I have some exciting news to tell you about biology, so stay tuned. As many of you know, biology is its own language. Our students are required to learn 5,000 new vocabulary words for this particular school year in order for them to be able to understand the questions on the test. So therefore, we do require our students to read the book, the chapter that we're currently learning about, and we do require our students to take notes. We take a lot of notes in biology. Those notes are very important to students mastering the concept. When we take our notes, students take Carnell notes. Uh, students use various Venn diagrams to take their notes as well. So you can always check your student's journal to see what notes they've taken for that particular day and if possible, ask questions about what it is that they are in fact learning. That will help us out and go a long way in regards to the student's performance on the STAR test. Now I want you to look right behind me. This is our second board in the classroom. And that particular board always has the topic that we're learning about, for example, the cell cycle, and it has some important details for the students to understand for that particular lesson. In this case, it says the cell cycle consists of interphase, which includes G1, S, and G2, and mitosis. And it also says the cell cycle ends with cytokinesis, which results in two separate cells. And then, of course, we have our little signature on there, but when students come into the classroom, they see that in the very back of the class. It's there for them in every single lesson, that board changes. So when they come in, this is what they see in the classroom. I wanted to direct your attention to our second learning screen in our classroom. This particular learning screen has the title of the lesson. It has the TEAK, the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skill. Uh, this particular lesson is entitled Cell Cycle, and it says cells divide in order to grow, reproduce, and carry out cellular processes. I am learning to explain the cell cycle. So every student goes through the learning goal for the lesson, and we also go through the success criteria, which I'll show you in just a few moments. From there, this is a Venn diagram so that you can kind of be familiar with what the students are expected to do. And the center is a cell cycle, and then around it are going to be important details about it. So every topic that we teach, something similar is put here on the screen for our students. And then, of course, we have our academic vocabulary. So students do uh, get the academic vocabulary, and they are required to define the terms. And we also use those terms throughout our classroom when we're working in our groups, collaborative groups. We also expect them to use those particular terms as well. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, it says DOL. Given 10 questions, students will answer with 100% accuracy. That means that we do expect for our students to pass their test, to answer their questions correctly. Biology is a required high school course for students to graduate. In addition, biology has an end of course exam, which is called the EOC, also known as the STAR test. My goal for all of my students is to score master's performance. That means 85% or higher. The STAR test consists of 50 questions. Those questions will test our students' knowledge over the cell, DNA, mitosis, meiosis, genetics, evolution, ecosystems, and the environment. It's very important that students remember the lessons that we're teaching in our classroom and that they are answering their questions to the very best of their ability. We will provide them with all of the necessary strategies that are required to be successful on a test. So if you look right behind me, on the board, when the students walk into the classroom, they will see the learning goal, the success criteria, and the essential questions, as well as the demonstration of learning. 
So I do expect students when they first walk into my classroom to please sit down quietly and look at the board to determine what they're going to be learning for that particular day. This is going to be our main instructional screen. It's right here in front of the classroom. We do share these particular presentations with our students using our app. It's called Nearpod. So students have their laptop computers. We share the presentation with them. They can look at it later on in the afternoons in case that they fall behind or if they want to go back over it again, they actually can. So in this case, if you guys take a close look, it says learning goal. Here's just an example of what the students will receive on the different lessons that we teach in our classroom. I am learning to describe the parts of the cell cycle and its importance in repair, growth, and a sexual reproduction in organisms. And then here's our success criteria. I can name, so let me pause, success criteria. How do you know that you are successful on that particular lesson? So number one, I can name and describe the order of the cell cycle. Number two, I can name and describe the order and role of mitosis in the cell cycle. And then number three, I can explain the role of interphase, G0, G1, S, and G2, compared to mitosis, which includes prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase in the cell cycle. So it's very important at the very beginning of the lesson that we take our time, we explain to the students what they're going to learn, and we also explain to them how they will demonstrate their success in the lesson. Now these lessons alone, parents, uh, these teaks are very, uh, and they're very deep. So we do go through, we do do our due diligence uh, to teach the lessons. We have 90 minutes. Our schedule is A day and B day. So the students see me specifically every other day. And then on Friday, we alternate between A day and B day. Here's that vocabulary. We talk to you about here are the essential questions for the actual lesson. And then, of course, we do have some interactive activities. Uh, here's a video clip for the students. Here is an activity sheet, a graphic organizer that the students can actually fill in as they're learning the material. And then we still have additional content that we do expect for our students to, to learn, along with the discussion questions that they can discuss in their small group. Uh, in which they work in collaborative groups here in my classroom. And then this is the actual interactive game. So as you can see, we vary up our lessons and we have different activities for our students to do. So personally, I think it's a really uh, creative way of teaching biology. So it's not just sitting and getting, students are doing different things. But it does involve that technology. They are required to bring their laptops to class along with their journals. Okay, and then the closing of the lesson, we close out the lesson and we uh, do incorporate writing in our lessons as well. And then this is the uh, learning goal that we just uh, mentioned. Hopefully I'm going in the right direction. Yes, I am. And then at the end of that, we move over into our actual test and then our actual assessment that the students are required to do, okay? So this, we wanted this to take a few moments to introduce myself to you. I'm Mr. McKenzie. I'm the abology teacher again for the Collegiate Academy here at David W. Carter High School. My class is an honors class. I teach freshman students and it is my goal that each student score master's performance on my biology star test as well as if possible I would like students to pursue a career in science, uh, specifically maybe becoming a doctor or a nurse or a scientist, uh, because we do need future scientists to continue to help us to live a healthy life. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email address is posted here for you. Uh, also, my cell phone a number is posted for you as well, and my office number, so you are welcome. welcome to give me a call and to contact me at any time. I'm here to work with you and your student. Uh, I'm always available and I will do what I can to help your child to be successful in my class. Grades, now let me, let me say this, I'm very, um, when it comes to my grades, I do my due diligence to make sure that I give out the work from the students, I take the work back up from the students. 
I grade the work, I give the students his or her grade, I place that grade into my grade book. So I want to make sure that I make that clear, that grades are a very big important part of uh, my classroom and what we do here at Carter High School. Thank you for your time. We do quite a bit of projects in the biology class. These are going to be some examples of a virus. Uh, this is going to be an envelope virus. This is a bacterial phage. And that last one as well is going to be a polyhedral shaped virus. And then we also do other projects that include cells. The eukaryotic cell, uh, here's a model of the prokaryotic cell. Uh, here's a model of the DNA molecule, deoxyribonucleic acid. And then that's going to be a model of the plant cell. So in biology is hands-on. Uh, students get an opportunity to uh, be very creative and display their learning utilizing uh, various types of projects. In this class, we work in cooperative groups and students get the opportunity to create anchor charts. So when they learn different topics, we can display our learning in various ways. And again, one of those ways is going to be anchor charts. We do use microscopes in this class. Uh, we do uh, have hands-on lab opportunities for students to learn as well. Uh, this particular microscope slide for this week's lesson is on mitosis. So students are getting an opportunity to see mitosis in fish as well as mitosis in plants and other living organisms. Part of all in learning. So all in learning is our data collection tool. And we take our quizzes and we take our tests Students are able to put their answers in the system using a remote, just like this, all in learning. Sometimes we activate the test. They can use their laptop computers and just click the answers using their keyboards. Other times, we're able to collect data by using the all in learning clickers. And then students are able to click in the answers and we can see in real time how well the students are performing on their test. Sign in sheet. We have tutoring for biology on Wednesdays at 4.30, 4.30 to 5. Students are welcome to come. It's open to all students. They can register to come by clicking on this particular QR code or they can sign in when they actually show up for tutoring. But we do have tutoring in our class for our students and we do expect for them to come when they need help with, help with understanding a particular topic or concept. Okay, we're doing a microscope lab. We got 33 students in the classroom. Hey, sir. <laughs> Don't do it too tight now. Okay. But yeah, and it just tiny, tricks the bleeding. Don't do it too. Don't, I don't want anybody to be hurt now. That's fine. That's fine. 